My brand new Karen sweaters are now live in my store. Click the link in the description to check them out if you haven't already. Entitled kid wants my car. Newborn and I can just take the bus in the middle of a Canadian winter. This happened many years ago, but I still get a chuckle out of the ridiculousness of it whenever I recall the ghoul of it on cold days like today. To set the scene and give you a cast rundown, it's a bitterly cold Canadian winter, and I, uniquely titled as me for this story, have myself a wee bundle of squishy new joy, a baby, with many an appointment to get to in said cold, and a husband who also must get to work daily. On this particular day in history, I get a phone call from my several years younger but still in his 20s brother, Entitled Kid, which isn't particularly unusual because he's made it a habit to call me and complain about any and everything in his spoiled rotten life. He is the precious golden child of my poor excuse for parents, EP or EM and ED respectively. All of them had long since driven me to move six comfortable hours away from their poop show, but they love to rope me into their dumpster fire because family. Today is no different. You see, my brother, the Entitled kid has a horrific track record with cars. I was given my old but reliable little car as a graduation gift after my distant uncle's passing some years before. It was fully paid off but never maintained and nobody in the family wanted it because it was, well, old. She was one heck of a reliable vehicle though and I loved her to death. It was also my only vehicle and an absolute necessity in my life. My entitled brother, on the other hand, was such a princess that nothing less than something paid for with someone else's money would do. They were offered a brand new car from my wealthy grandparents well before grad, but offered to buy a beater with potential and use the rest of the thousands of dollars they had saved on modifying it. My entitled brother totaled it almost immediately. They bagged it until it collapsed, dropped my entitled parents' money on fixing it, never got it running again, and were gifted a second vehicle just months later from wealthy grandparents once again. Lately, my entitled brother has been calling me to complain about the second car. He was furious that our grandparents wouldn't buy him a brand new one, disgusted that it was a car and not a big tricked out pickup truck, and absolutely appalled by our grandparents and entitled parents' greed. I'd heard it up one side and down the other since his first car. The poor thing, living with entitled parents without paying for so much as his own gas or cell phone bill, let alone rent, food, or bills. The indignity of this sweet innocent boy having to drive a used car that he still didn't have to pay for because he couldn't hold a job for longer than a few months and blew all his money on booze teenage girls and modifications for the car he hated so much just to make it tolerable i normally just laughed and told him he had the wrong audience because i've been forced to pay for everything from necessities to scraps since i was 14 and was treated like trash by the same people spoiling him rotten he didn't care though he was the victim I had it easy because I had a trashy rented apartment, a husband with a minimum wage job, and a baby. So easy, in fact, that when he called me on this particular day, he had a solution to his problems. It isn't fair that uncle died and you got his car. What? I'd rather him be here than have his car, but nobody wanted it and I needed it for university, so that's just the way it went. You weren't even close to driving when I got it. Plus, grandparents have bought you two cars since then. Mine's at least 10 years older than both of those. Yeah. Yeah, but EP should have known that I'd need it more when I was done with school. They should have saved it for me and made you buy your own. What? That's ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. You have a new car now. No, I don't. Then he proceeded to explain how our entitled parents' inability to maintain his second car somehow led to it breaking some crucial parts. And it was beyond salvageable. My parents had already dropped thousands on repairing this car in the few months my entitled brother had been driving it. But he still wouldn't stop sporting and bagging the heck out of it. It though, so it followed suit with its predecessor and faced a woefully early demise. I tried being the responsible older sibling and telling my entitled brother that he needs to take better care of his stuff, but I would have had better luck convincing a raccoon to join the church of staying the F out of trash cans. It was, as usual, everybody's fault but EK that this misfortune has befallen him. It just isn't fair. I should have your car. I disagree, but we can't turn back time, I guess. But you don't need it like I do. You live in the big city. I live in a small rural town, so I need to do a lot of driving to get to work. I can't find a new job if I can't even get there. Why don't you carpool with our parents? They always offer to take you to your jobs when they work. But how am I supposed to see my friends or buy anything? EP won't drive me anywhere other than work. That's not fair. I really just need your car. It's basically mine anyway, since I should have gotten it. Oh, snap. You're serious? I have a kid. My husband uses my car to get to work and back. How am I supposed to get baby? to their appointments and how are you gonna pay for the car insurance with no job your big city has a bus system you guys can buy
bus everywhere. There's no bus here. I need your car. I'm absolutely stunned at this point. Dude, you're not getting my car. The bus is expensive. Plus, it's freezing here and I don't live at a stop, so I'm not waiting outside to take baby on the bus. Also, my husband's work schedule doesn't work with the bus schedule. And even if I did decide to let you have it, how would you get it or pay for it? The plates need to be renewed every month. It's almost $80. Where are you getting that money? My entitled brother is smug because he's clearly thought out this genius plan already and I'm surely going to have to go along with it now. Well, our parents were thinking of driving up there next week for a visit. I'll go with them and grab the car then. Or you and baby can drive here for a visit, then our parents can drive you guys back. I'd rather you do that because I don't really want to drive all the way there and back. I don't need to pay for the insurance either. Why would I need to do that? It's still your car in your name. You wouldn't stop paying for it just because I'm the one driving it. You're the one who's helping me. I could text you my email later and you could transfer me money for gas like once a week to make sure it's running and all that. But that won't go to insurance. I'll just make sure the car's running. I honestly didn't think that I could be any more shocked than when they demanded my car to begin with. But to insist that I not only give up my only means of transportation in favor of paying for the bus for my husband and I, but also pay for them to drive my car for God knows how long? I was honestly too blown away to even be angry. I couldn't even laugh at the insanity of it. All I could do was give him a hard no, tell him again why that wasn't fair or reasonable, and listen to him rant furiously about how unfair I was being until he called me a greedy effing lady and hung up on me. Now, this wouldn't be an entitled parent story without an entitled parent making a good showing. And our entitled mum hates to miss out on the spotlight. While our dad was busy dumping time and money into fixing my brother's car after our call, my entitled mum called me a short while later just to talk and check on baby. You'll never believe what my brother asked me for when he called earlier. He already told me that you wouldn't give him your car next week? Of course not. What are we supposed to do here? Bus? It's freezing and expensive. I know, I know, it's just, well, he planned it out and he was so sure you'd say yes. He put so much effort into figuring it all out and he was so hopeful. Now he's being so mean to all of us because you won't let him. Mum, that's insane. His plan was to take a car from a new mum and her newborn, have the new mum pay for everything and probably trash the car in the process. Would that make sense to you if it was anybody but me being asked to do this? Well, no, but you aren't really a new mother. You had a baby, yeah, but you've got a husband and a home and you live in a big city. It's a lot harder for the other new mums I've known and your brother has such bad luck with cars and jobs lately that mum I have a tiny apartment and I'm just saying that you could have helped you had the option to help your brother and you chose not to he needs a car you've made things so much harder on all of us because you won't help your family what about you then why can't he drive your car your dad and I need it for work we can't spare it and with how hard your brother is on cars we don't trust him with ours my husband needs mine for his job and I need it for baby plus I don't want my brother to wreck my car either. But that's different. Your dad and I need to support EK ourselves. You're just playing house, but we have an actual family to support. This is insane. If you won't help them, fine. But you remember this the next time you need anything. And I was hung up on again. I wish I could tell you that this ends with some justice or something. Like I said, it's been years since then. Plenty of time for karma to come rolling on through and give my entitled brother a reality check. Unfortunately, it never worked like that. I received weeks of flack for my refusal to hand my car over. My entitled parents, entitled kid brother, and grandparents all took turns sending me passive-aggressive texts, lecturing me, ignoring me, guilting me, and whatever else they could think of to remind me of how horrible I was for not giving EK my car. Eventually, my entitled brother was gifted yet another new vehicle, this time one that was more to his liking that he totaled in a few months. In the five-ish years since this story, he has written off at least six or seven other vehicles. How does he still have a license? One belonged to our parents which ended up being picked off the highway in pieces. The other was grandparents. The rest all gifted to him and not a single one of those write-offs were his fault. He still lives with our entitled parents and while I haven't spoken to any of them in a couple of years now, I hear he's on another brand new car paid for by someone else's dime that's needed to be repaired a few times already. It's none of my concern now. Still, I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it and wonder how in the heck he thought any of that was going to work in his favor. 
Um, not gonna lie to you, the one thing that I think of when I read this story is what the heck is wrong with your family? Like, your brother is bad enough, totaling six or seven cars. I seriously don't know how he still has a license. But your entitled parents sound just as bad, if not even worse. When your mum said your family doesn't count because you already have a house and live in the city, like, how does that make any sense? You have a baby. What was the actual quote? You're just playing house, but we have an actual family to support. I mean, come on, what does that actually mean? I don't know, I think it's a very good idea that you've cut ties with them, to be honest. People like that aren't really good for anything apart from taking stuff from you. Anyway, that is going to be the end of this Entitled Parents video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to, check out another Entitled Parents video. Just click the playlist on screen right away. With that being said, I will see you all tomorrow with some more Reddit content right here on the channel.